Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay jewelry video at my YouTube channel and my blog, keepsakecrafts.net. Today I'm going to show you how to use a purchased mold to make a really cute pair of earrings. So here I have a selection of silicone molds and you can purchase these at your local craft store and they come in lots of different sets. This one is pet. It has cats and dogs and fish and a dog house and some cute things. This one's kind of fun sea life. It's got dolphins and shells and starfish. And this one I showed you because you can actually use it as a starting point uh, for leaves and flowers. It actually gives you a head start on your sculpting, like for flowers such as this one. But the one I'm going to use is this one. It has some birds and nests. Now you'll notice this one is rigid. These ones are flexible. They're a little bit easier to use because you can kind of stretch and flex the silicone to pop out your pieces. So what you'll need to do with one of these is prepare it by spraying in a bit of armorol or some other kind of release. Spray it in your mold that you want to use and then wipe out all of the visible remainder of it. And what's left is a very thin film that will make sure your clay will release more easily. So here I have some polymer clay that I mixed and I'm just going to pull off a piece that will be a little bit more than I'll need to fill my mold. Now you can see this mold has a lot of deep detail and depressions. So what you'll want to first do is roll your clay into a very smooth ball. Just put it between your palms and roll it until there are no creases or fold lines left. You want it very smooth because those creases will show. Then in order to get into these deeper parts of the mold, I'm just going to put my hands in a V shape and roll the ball into a bit of a teardrop. Make sure there's still no creases on that tip. And now you can press that right into the deepest, most detailed part of your mold. Press with a good amount of pressure. And now you can see I have quite a bit more clay here than I need. So I'm just going to use my blade and trim off the excess. And now what I have left here is the exact amount I need to make my impression. So I'm going to once more roll the clay into a ball. Like I said, now I have the exact right amount. And then once more roll a teardrop. And then once more press it in, pushing really hard so you get all that nice detail that's in the mold and try to push the clay away from the edges. It'll make cleanup later easier and just kind of bring it into all the detail. A piece of coarse sandpaper or one of these green scrubbies works great to get just a little texture on the back. Now like I said with these with the flexible molds you could just kind of flex it away from the edges of the piece. But since this is rigid I'm going to use a tool and just try to work up a small area. Be gentle here, but a little bit of distortion with your piece on the back isn't going to hurt. You just want to bring up enough so that you can kind of get your finger in there and start rolling it right out. And then you can peel it out and there's all your great detail. Isn't he cute? Now sometimes there'll be a little bit of excess clay from the edges, which is why I like to push it away from the edge. You can just take a tool or your fingers and kind of smooth that out. And you can change it up too. You can add more detail. Remember, this is still the piece of clay. You can sculpt it and, and do more with it. So once your piece is shaped to your liking, then there's one more thing we need to do before baking it, and that's add a loop to hang it from. I'm going to use a jump ring, but I'm going to straighten out these ends where the split is. Just with some chain nose pliers, I'm just going to grab that. Something I tell you to never do with a jump ring, but you have my permission now. And just straighten out that end. And leave them at a bit of an angle. That will help it to be more secure in the clay once it's baked. And if you have a very delicate design, you might want to wait half an hour or so or put this in the freezer or the fridge for a little while before you do this so you don't distort it too much. And just go ahead and press that right in where you need it to be. Just gently. And if you need to, you can kind of reshape it a little bit. 
Now I'll take a look at this and see at the thickest point it's about half an inch thick. So you're going to put it on an index card and bake it at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for an hour. Most clays need to be baked for 30 minutes per quarter inch so it's not excessive to bake it for an hour. It's a good idea to have several pieces going all at once, not heat up your oven just for one. And once your piece comes out of the oven, you just want to grab that loop and give it a tug. And if it wants to come out, then go ahead and pull it out. Add in a couple drops of super glue and put it back in place and let it dry. And then the next step is we're going to add some paint just to enhance the details of our piece. And so all you do is get some brown or black or really whatever color paint you want, something dark. Paint it all over, let it sit for a few minutes till it just starts to dry. So then you can just take a damp towel, I like to use baby wipes, and wipe all over and just leave the paint in the crevices. You can see how much more interesting this one on the right is with all the detail enhanced with paint. So you can see here, I have one of the earrings already done, and isn't that cute? And then I'm going to use the other one, which is a slightly different little bird, to make the other earring. And I just have a few beads, a bit of 20 gauge wire. This is about five, six inches of 20 gauge wire. I'm just going to make a 90 degree bend, about an inch and a half from one end, and then make a loop to start a wrapped loop. This will be the top of the earring, so I can close it up now. And then hold it with one pair of chain nose pliers and use another one to make a few wraps. Trim your excess wire. So if your loop isn't nice and round, you can just tuck in the loop of your round nose pliers and kind of give it a wiggle and make that nice and round again. Then you can slide on your beads. Like I said, this is the top of the bracelet, so I'll start with these shells couple of saucer spacers, and a coin bead, kind of crackled glass, and then I'll make my other wrap loop, same way, only this time I need to put that into the loop of my bird. Close that loop and hold it with one pair, and then repeat the wire wrapping. Next I'll open the loop of my ear wire and attach that. And you know, you don't have to make those just for a pair of earrings. It would be really cute for a pendant, for a necklace, or for a charm bracelet. And then to finish it up, just take a minute, and make sure your loops are all nice and straight, and you may have to twist them a little bit so that your bird is facing front. And there they are. Aren't they cute? Now, if you'd like to make a pair of earrings like these, I will have links to supplies at the blog post that accompanies this video. You can click on it right here, or it's also in the description box below. I hope you like this video and that you'll give sculpting with push molds a try. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to you do for three new videos every week. You can follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and on my blog. Happy creating. Bye-bye.